He ain't asking you to be of this thing. He's asking you to trust him so he can show you how to. If you're going to walk in what I teach, you have got to make this your foundation. How Jesus loved on the cross. That is your life. These are some of the most astounding. Watch it. As he is, so are we. Welcome again to Jesus is Answer Ministry Broadcast. I'm Pastor Robert Scales, and I tell you, I am just full of joy, and I, I'm so excited. I'm going to start teaching a new series this week, and, and also next week, and um, on um, uh, what do you live by? Now, think about that for a minute, I, I, and I talk this at the church. The Lord told me to teach it and then bring it to you. What what do you really live by? Every day, you know, people say, yeah, well, I live by the word. I, well, what word? You know, um, I, I live by faith. And well, well, what does that mean? You know, and, and so I want to teach you this week. Um, do you live by your feelings? Do you live by fear? Do you live by emotions? Or do you live by Jesus? And so let's open our Bibles up uh, to Romans chapter 1, verse 16 and 17. And um, we, 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 we begin to look into this. Now listen carefully and call all your friends. Tell them to tune in. We're on every day, Monday through Friday, and, uh, and also on the weekends where you can feed up on this. And, and I'm telling you, you you're never going to be the same. Romans 1.16, we're teaching on what do you live by? For I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek or to the Gentiles, non-Jews. Non and, and, and did you ever notice that the power of God and the salvation is to everyone that believeth? And believing is not just saying you believe. It's a trust, a reliance, a dependence upon the Lord Jesus. It's, it's a dependence of what he has is transferred into your life. Now, <clears throat> verse 17. Now, here's our text here. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith. For it is as it is written, and here it is, the just, as the righteous, those who've been made right by God through, through Jesus, through his blood, shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Now, as we read over in Romans chapter 12, verse verse. Uh, two, as we let me just read verse one. Uh, Wherefore, see, we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. That's the saints up in heaven watching us. Let us lay aside every weight and, and the sin which do it so easily beset us. And it didn't say the sin, and that sin really is, is unbelief. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. You, you can't run this race without, verse 2 in Romans 12, looking unto Jesus. Looking unto how he loved. Looking unto who he is. Looking unto what he's done. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. Now, they, they add it in this verse, which really takes away from the original Greek. Uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. But they added our in there. Really, I believe if you take our out of there and just, just look unto Jesus, the beginning and the end, of, of faith. Jesus is the only man ever walked on this earth, got everything he ever prayed from God. He got everything from God. He got everything God is and everything God do. 
Jesus was the perfect imprint of God, the very likeness of God. He was the nature of God, the character of God, the authority of God. He was God's love manifested to us. And we, we have to look under Jesus. Now, now let's, let's go back looking under Jesus. The beginning, the end, the author and finisher of faith. So when you go back, to Romans 117, the just shall live by faith. Now, what do we live by? Well, let's interpret this. This will change your life. It will change your thinking so that you can prove what is that good, perfect, and acceptable will of God, which is Christ Jesus our Lord. Faith is Jesus Christ. Faith is is really, when you break faith down, it's, it's being persuaded or convinced of something that someone said uh, with the evidence of it not necessarily being seen. So we as God's people who are born again and have his spirit and his life in us, we live by Jesus. We live by faith. Jesus is the author and finisher of faith. Well, what do you live by? <laughs> do, do Jesus work in every area in your life? Or does Satan work? Uh, do your flesh work? Uh, do you work? Um, do do the news work in your life? Do fear work in your life? What, what do you live by every day? Well, the Bible says we're to live by Jesus. Now, in, in order to understand, uh, we need to go get some information. In, in John 16, and I have to, I have to teach this to bring people to where we're going uh, the next few weeks. Um, Jesus said in, in John 16, 27, For the Father himself loveth you, because you've loved me. So, you know, God, God's going to show you affections. God's going to show you his love. Uh, then you have to love who God sent and believe that Jesus came forth from God. Now that's big. <laughs> that's that's huge because what that does when you believe that Jesus came forth from God, then you have to know He's the only way to get to God, the only way to know God, the only way to see God, the only way to experience God. Um, and so Jesus said that, that there there are two things that will get the Father's affection and love working in your life. Number one, not, not that just, you know, people preaching God love you and that's it, because Jesus said here that you had to love him and believe he came forth from God. Jesus said in verse 28 of John 16, I came forth from the Father and am coming to the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. So he's telling uh, 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 his disciples, and that's us, that, that um, he came forth from God. He came forth out of the bosom of God. His disciples said in verse 29, Lo, now speak of thy plainness, speak of no proverb. Proverb in the Greek means parable or riddle. And, and, and he, was, he spoke uh, of parables all the time. So that people that that could never understand what he was saying unless they came and asked him. And, and if you notice when Jesus told his disciples in Matthew 13, uh, verse, verse 10, verse 9, after Jesus said the parable, uh, verses 3, through eight. He said, he that have ears to hear, let him hear. And that word hear in the Greek in Matthew 13, 9, 
is to hear effectively to grant or perform that which is spoken. <laughs> so Jesus ain't saying stuff for you to just be a listener. He, 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 he teaches for you to hear to perform what he says. And then Jesus goes, and the disciples came and said unto him, Why speakest thou unto them in parables? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Because it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it's not given. And so even today with you listening to me on the broadcast, <laughs> uh, th th this stuff is not going to be given to you. Unless you're going back asking Jesus uh, to, to, to explain this to you, where you can live this every day. And Jesus answered them and told them why. He said, because it's given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom, but to them it's not given. And so you you would you you can see this. And this this is the, the people that, that just watch pre preachers on TV, they, they're not gonna get much if they don't go back and pray about these things and seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. So, so that the Lord can reveal this by you putting it to practice. And every time Jesus would teach parables, and the disciples didn't understand them either. But here is who Jesus reveals them to. The ones that come back and ask him, what do this mean? That, that's who this is for. So they can put it into practice, be doers of the word, and not hear us only. Now, <laughs> you go back into Romans chapter 1. Uh, you, you see now that the just shall live by Jesus. Now, what, what we got to understand, I asked the church this uh, uh, months ago. And nobody knew. And I asked, I'm going to ask you, I'm going to see if you know. What is the most, after you're born again, filled with the Spirit, uh, you, you know, you, you're reading the Word, you, what's the most important thing of the life of a Christian? And then people say, obey the Lord, uh, do what He say, and, and, and none, none of that's right. The, the, the most, pray every day. No, 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 that ain't, that ain't it. The most important area of the life of a Christian, the most, is to hear Jesus. It's, it's the most important area in the life of a believer is to hear Jesus, believe and speak what Jesus said, and do what Jesus tell you to do. <clears throat> we, we, we're going to live by, by hearing Jesus. When you live by faith, you're going to live by hearing Jesus, believing and speaking, and doing what Jesus tells you to do. We, we see this in John chapter 2. And, and here Jesus um, was uh, at a marriage uh, of Canaan of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. And both Jesus would call his disciples to the marriage. They got invited to come, and they went. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto, unto Jesus, they have no wine. Now, when Mary said this to Jesus, he, he, he didn't really want to do it. He only did what he saw his father do. Jesus only said what he heard his father say. And so he said to, to, to his mother, woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. And, and, and so, you know, for him to die for her, this is what his whole life was about, was doing the will of the Father. Jesus said, I didn't come to do my will, but the will of him that sent me. Now think about that for a minute. And when Jesus said, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother said the most astounding, the greatest faith statement you will ever hear. <laughs> These are the greatest words that you will ever learn. 
in the whole Bible. You'll never learn nothing greater than this. And I pray that the next few weeks that God will reveal this to you in a, in a way that will change, transform, renew your mind and your life like never before. And here is the greatest faith statement, the greatest statement of Jesus you will ever hear. Whatever he say, do it. Did you get that? Say that out loud with me. Whatever Jesus say, do it. See? And, and so when, when ministers don't teach this, they are not going to get you to live in Mr. Perfect Jesus. Jesus is perfect. What does that mean? That means he was tempted in every point as we are yet without sin. He's tempted with fear, uh, lust, wanting, uh, every homosexual, adultery, fornication, uh, uh, bitterness, anger, wrath, strife, sedition, you name it. If it's sin and darkness, he would tempt it with it. Yet, never one time sin. And so, so that means that he knew God accurately by being able to only speak what he heard the Father say and only do what he saw the Father do. Mary said, what, whatsoever he said unto you, do it. Why? Because this is when, this is living by faith. This is this is producing Jesus. See you, 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 you know, I was, I was, I just got back from Georgia. We met this lady and I started preaching to them, her and her husband, and he was astounded at, at, at what I was sharing with them. And she had a book and, and she wanted to bless uh, one of my daughters in the faith with a book. And, 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 you know, she told her, you know, listen, this will really help you identify yourself, you know. And so I butted in and said, well, we really don't need to identify us. We need to identify who Christ is. We, we should be seeking to know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. Uh, what in the world we want to know us for, you know. And, and so most 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 preachers really preach more about self than they do our Lord Jesus Christ. And so Mary understood. Now, when Mary told those servants, whatever he say, do it. This is what moved God to tell Jesus. To tell them, fill them pots up with water. And if, if you're not hearing from the Lord, you're not telling him, Lord, whatever you say, I'll do it. What you're really doing is trying to get him to fix your life. You're trying to get him <laughs> in a selfish way to fix things in your life when you really need to be seeking him to hear from him and you'll do whatever he say. And so it, it, this will move the Lord if you will humble yourself and lay your dependency on him where whatever he say you will do it. Man, your life will change forever. If you will learn to humble yourself and lay your dependency on him where whatever he say you will do it and so this is the greatest thing statement and Jesus told him what to do and they filled the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and then Jesus said for them first he said fill them up they went and done it then after they done what he said draw out now and and, and uh, bear them to the governor of the feast and they bear it and, and, and when he takes it, he said, wow, y'all saved the best for last. Usually, 
at those feasts, they would serve the best first and then give the worst at the last. <laughs> but when God get his hand in it, the, the best always lasts. If you had something to do with something in front, then God always will have the best. If you are here, Jesus, and do what he say, you can have the best in front. And so you, it's some principles here that, that you can learn to get the Lord to manifest in your life. And that's hearing Jesus, believing and speaking what he says. Because what that does, it, it, it now enables you to walk what he is, what he said, what he said for you to do. What he And he needs us to speak, believe in our heart and speak what he said. And then do what he tell us to do. Now we able to walk just like him. And so, now, now you see this again in Romans chapter 10. Now look at this. Many of y'all can quote this verse. So then faith come by hearing. <laughs> and hearing by the word of God. Now let me go uh, uh to Romans 10, uh, 17, in the Amplified Bible. Now, I used to have all them Bibles up here now. Oh, I'm glad I don't have to bring all them no more. Okay, and then I want to go to chapter 10, um, and in verse 17. Now, now, listen to this. The King James says, faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Now, now listen, carefully. This, this, this will change your life to hear this. Jesus is faith. Faith in Jesus. Jesus is faith. You're not going to get faith without Jesus Christ. Uh, he is the author and finisher of faith. He's the beginning and the end of how to get God to come through for us. Jesus is. And so he has to say something. And something that you've got to hear. And and and, and there, there's so many times that you're going to have to speak what Jesus say. You're going to have to believe and speak what Jesus say. And then you're going to have to do what Jesus tell you to do. So you can produce God living in you on this earth through Christ Jesus our Lord. Now watch this carefully. So faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now think about this. Faith came to those servants when Mary said whatever he said do it. When they heard Jesus say fill up the pots with water and then go dip out and give it to the king. That water turned to wine because they heard Jesus say something. They believed and spoke what Jesus said, or, or, or they just acted on it. Now watch carefully. Jesus comes by hearing what he said. Now here's the Amplified Bible. So faith comes by hearing what is told and what is heard, comes by the preaching of the message that came from the lips of Christ, the Messiah himself. So, now listen to this as I get ready to close today. I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow. Faith come by hearing what come from Jesus' lips. Faith only comes. It won't work because it came if you don't believe in speaking and then go, go act on what he tell you to do. But listen to this. Jesus can only come in your life if you hear him, believe and speak and do what he tell you to do. There's no way Jesus can come and you don't hear nothing. How would you know what the good news is if, if you don't hear? How can you believe if you don't hear? And so, so then Jesus, faith come by hearing Jesus, what come from Jesus' lips? Now, now we can say, Jesus will come when you hear something from his lips by the Holy Spirit or from his teachings 
or from what the apostles have said about Jesus. Amen. Now I'm going to pick this back up tomorrow so y'all make sure you tune in. I want to make available to you this six CD series of what do you live by? And on the screen is our address for a love gift of $30 or more. Make your checks and money orders to Jesus as Answer Ministries, Post Office Box 292-112, Nashville, Tennessee, 37229. And I'm telling you, saints, these will absolutely change your life. And and uh, they'll be a blessing to you. You ought to bless somebody with these and, and get you some to listen at where that you can feed up on the word. Now, think about that again. Faith come by hearing the words come from Jesus' lips. That's how Jesus comes. So order these today. Also, you can go to robertscaleministry.org and order these online with your credit card. And uh, also, uh, uh, we, we'll get them right out to you. I'll pay the poaches and handling it, and we'll get them out to you. I know that they'll be a tremendous blessing to you. Also, I want to invite you all to Jesus as a church. A church that's alive is worth the drive, and I'm telling you, God is moving by his spirit, and uh, people's lives are absolutely being changed. And so come, meet some of the saints in the church and, 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 and really uh, start hearing the testimonies and what God is doing. It's, it's tremendous. Uh, and, and so our, our address is on the screen. You can go online, robberscapeminute.org, and get directions. <laughs> or you can call 615-237-9802 and get directions. And we're in Watertown, about 15 minutes from Lebanon. And we also very close to Murfreesboro, and we're not that far from Nashville. Amen. Well, I want to thank my partners and friends. Thank you so much for your financial support. Thank you all for your prayers. Thank you for believing God with me to take this message around the world. And it takes my partners and my friends to help me. So thank you so much uh, for being a blessing, helping me with the production, helping me uh, with our airtime. And without my partners... It's impossible for us to stay on TV. Well, my time is up. My prayer for you, saints, is that you will know the love of Christ that passes knowledge and be filled with all the fullness of God. From Jesus Answer Ministries, I'm Pastor Robert Scales. Remember now, John 15, 12, Jesus said, this is my commandment. As I loved you, go love one another. Have a blessed day. We'll look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.